It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. I said a couple of moments ago, if it's if it's March and we're talking to Dick Clarson, Clausen, it's because the Builders Association Home Show is coming up. If it's July, though, and we're talking to Mr. Clausen, we're talking baseball. Youth Legion Baseball is coming uh, to our area once more. The Western Regionals start tomorrow. And then the state tournament back at First Commonwealth Bank Field in Homer City next week. Our conversation with Dick Clausen brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Special time of the year for you, isn't it? It's a busy time. Excellent. It's a time to see some young players who have been working since April to uh, to make it to the regionals. Uh, we've got one regional here in western Pennsylvania and two regionals out east. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to be great to have the ball players uh, in town again. We start with western regional action tomorrow and teams coming from all across the western part of the state. Right, we've got three from uh, Westmoreland County, two from up, uh, three from up in Erie County, and uh, one uh, here from Elk County and uh, one here from Indiana. Yeah, well, let's talk about that one team from Indiana County. The SW Jack Drillers will be representing Indiana County in the in the regional tournament, and that's a pretty good group of ball players. They've got some accomplishments at the high school level, and here they are bringing it up uh, to Youth Legion. Yes, good solid players, and uh, they've got a lot of experience with the high school, and the, and then moving into the to the Legion playing season, they play some other exhibition games to to stay sharp, and they're doing well. Yeah, the the Indiana County League went well, uh, and and they're on quite the winning streak. Uh, so uh, we we look for big things from them. It should be exciting, and they've got the uh, the the seven o'clock game for the first three nights, and then if they, hopefully they'll have a seven o'clock game for the championship game on Monday. Yeah, that's coming up on Monday. So the tournament takes place over the course of this weekend, starting tomorrow, and uh, and the action. Uh, it, it's it's kind of hard to find a moment when there's not something happening on that ball field. Absolutely. I was there on uh, Tuesday night, and uh, they were taking trimming it, and it looks great. Uh, they had the fire department out earlier before the moratorium on water, uh, watering the field. So it should be in good shape. The rain we had last night, uh, just dampen it up just a little bit and make it look good. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's a challenge this year, keeping the fields looking good because of the uh, because of the way that the weather has been. But it's such a wonderful facility, and the Homer City Area Baseball Boosters have, have done such hard work down through the years to make this a really special event. They do, and I was there, and it's the, uh, the older guys that I've been working with for the last 20 years that are, are still out there plugging away, doing I it. Uh, I offer this tournament every year to the other leagues, uh, and everybody says, we want to go to Homer City. Good concession stand and real friendly people in a beautiful field. Yeah, absolutely, and and they do it right. I mean, uh, they not only is the field in, in wonderful condition uh, and it's such a great facility, but they know how to put on an event. Absolutely, and it, it, it's it's clockwork. I mean, they've been working on this. I've met with them three times this year, uh, just to lay down. Just we've done it. it it's it's uh, something they've been doing all the time, but we just refresh everybody's mind and what's going to what the expectations are and. And uh, every year they come up with something different. Uh, what's really going to be neat this year, the uh, uh, fireworks and the Pirate Parrot at the state championships. How about that? How about that? And that's next week. That's next week. That's correct. That starts next uh, next Saturday. But that's right back here at First Commonwealth. First Commonwealth Field, Field right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, we've, we've got uh, two championship uh, tournaments going on out east. The top two from both of those are the four entries from the eastern part of the state. They'll drive here, check in with me at the hotel uh, between 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock next Friday, start playing ball next Saturday. And hopefully SW Jack is going to be one of those teams surviving out of the West. The host team, of course, will be Homer City Post 493. That's right. Now we've got the, Hopefully we can get a couple of teams from Westmoreland County, get Erie in here, and yeah. get her going that way. So it should be a lot of fun, good, good, good baseball, and the kids are excited about coming and playing. Youth Legion Baseball, of course, used to be known as Junior Legion Baseball, contrasting with Senior Legion Baseball. Legion Baseball down through the years has been one of the real gems of uh, amateur baseball and scholastic age baseball uh, for a lot of years, many, many years. There have been changes, uh, and, and uh, you know, it's harder to get guys on teams because uh, you've got so many other sports options uh, through the course of a summer. You work in summer vacations, and, and, and so uh, it's it's – more difficult to put a team together and to keep it together and a league together uh, as well as Indiana County has. And uh, while those struggles do go on and everybody understands that uh, uh, 
uh, that you really have to fight hard to make your make your league viable and and worthwhile. Well, absolutely. A couple of years ago, we allowed the teams to roster twenty players only because of vacation. People were, hey, I've been doing this vacation, going to this, this beach house for the last fifteen years now. Uh, the players playing ball, but uh, we're still going to go to the beach. So we we allow that. You can roster twenty players at our at our uh, league at the uh, playoff level. Uh, you comment uh, next year is the one hundredth anniversary of American League Baseball. Wow, wow, and that's all across the nation, across the country. That's correct. So hopefully yeah. we'll see some some interesting uh, tributes and some uh, a lot of good events to to cover that. Yeah. Now, for this year's, you mentioned the Pirate Parrot, the fireworks, uh, and and uh, the effort to make it into a really special thing for all of the players and, and their families who come to Indiana County. It's a great boon to Indiana County, isn't it? It is. Uh, a lot of the families uh, do follow their kids. Uh, they're 13 to 15, 16 years old, so they can't drive, so somebody's got to bring them. And uh, we've actually, it's, it's been a boon for IUP because we've had some siblings come and visit IUP hmm. while their younger sibling was... Uh, playing baseball or waiting to play baseball. Yeah, I happen to know that this weekend, because I have some uh, folks that I've, I've heard of coming from Mercer County down, uh, this is an IUP recruitment weekend. Yes, so, it is. So there will be people here checking out the campus, and maybe they'll be involved in Youth Legion as well. Uh, Youth Legion baseball, of course, uh, is not only a great financial boon uh, to uh, restaurants and to hotels around here, but it's also a financial burden that is taken on by the boosters to make this happen. Exactly right. They have to uh, provide the field, uh, provide the officiating, and uh, turn on the lights and make sure it's, uh, the lines are proper and, and it's in good shape. And housing those players, uh, somebody has to bear that cost, too. Hey, that, the housing, uh, their teams are on their own at the regionals, but they do. the host does pay for the housing at the states. Yeah. So conceivably, in, in a worst-case example, they could house seven teams. Yeah. Each team's allowed seven rooms. They have to house them and feed them. Yeah. Wow. So we like the teams that travel less than 75 miles are the ones you like to see win. <laughs> so you're really rooting for oh, those you West got it. You got it. We know we're, we're stuck with bringing the four teams from out east, but uh, hopefully they lose quick and get out of town. <laughs> well, however it works out, you know you're going to see some great baseball action. Uh, and, and kids, I, I, I think that if people watch high school baseball, um, Little League Baseball, we've seen Indiana County making some great strides in Little League Baseball and softball. Um, playing ball has sort of uh, undergone a revival in, it has. in recent years. I would agree, and uh, a lot of it's um, uh, the kids are, are paying attention. They're doing some summer winter clinics and uh, taking it serious. It's, it's been cyclical. When my son played um, 12, 12, 30 years ago, there were 16 teams in the Indiana Little League. Now yeah. they're down to very few. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there aren't as many kids playing either. Yeah. Kids are dedicated, though, the ones that are oh. playing. When they, when they like it, they enjoy it. That's exactly right. Okay. So it's happening this weekend. Gets underway tomorrow at what time? 1 o'clock. Uh, we've got on Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there's 1, 4, and 7. Mm -hmm. SW Jack plays a 7 o'clock game all three days. Mm -hmm. uh, SW Jack, of course, is the Indiana County entry. Who do they play tomorrow night? They play uh, Ligonier. Okay. On Saturday, they play Wesleyville, and on Sunday, they play Monroeville. Yeah. You know, some of those teams, they come back every year, and uh, and we and we know the names of the towns, uh, and, and some of them, of course, they're the little brothers of guys that have Absolutely. played before them. Absolutely. We had, uh, we've got an, a new team this year, and, and Bill Otto, your co colleague, who's an umpire up in the uh, Erie area, mm -hmm. told us back in the uh, first part of June when he was in town that uh, Titusville is a team to watch. Well, Titusville is number one. There you go. And they're, this is their first year in Legion baseball, and uh, they got tired of, of pay-to-play baseball up there. Join the Legion, and they're excited to come down here. Oh, terrific, terrific. So good stuff happening. And, again, you said what time for the first game tomorrow? 1 o'clock tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, 1 o'clock on Friday. Good stuff, good stuff. And get your get your dinner there. Have a wonderful time watching ball. Absolutely. And you, you, you gave us a good weather report a little bit ago. So yeah, Do whatever I can. <laughs> we appreciate it. However I can help, Dick. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and WCCS is going to be broadcasting this house, sir. Yeah, on Renda Digital TV. Okay, it'll be on Renda Digital TV for the uh, the SW Jack games, and uh, and uh, we'll be there for the state tournament as well. And uh, really looking forward to it. It's always a great time. Always fun to see you. Appreciate it.
Dick Clausen and everybody involved with the uh, Indiana County Youth Legion uh, as they put on the Western Regional tomorrow and uh, the, over the weekend. And then next weekend, the state tournament comes right back to First Commonwealth Bank Field. Thanks for coming in to visit with us. Well, it's always a good pleasure to talk to you and get caught up. Thank yeah. you. There's Dick, and it is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Now, Dick did mention the weather for the weekend, and it actually does look very, very good. Uh, for today, sunny skies and 80 degrees, even though it's overcast to start out. Clear tonight down to 53, then mostly sunny, 78 tomorrow when the baseball action gets underway. Partly sunny Saturday, a high of 84. Some of the forecast services are a little bit less optimistic, but they don't, and none of them have rain in the forecast. And Sunday, partly sunny and a high temperature of 87 degrees. Right now in downtown Indiana, this morning our temperature is 67 Boomer Sports coming up in just a couple of moments. And in our next half hour, we talk to uh, somebody who's coming in to Indiana this weekend. He's an author who's written a book about World War II bombers working the European Theater of Operations in the same division as Jimmy Stewart. And he'll be appearing at the Jimmy Stewart Museum on Saturday at noon, signing copies of his book. Uh, actually, that's the interview that we have at 9:10 this morning. Next half hour, we talk to Tony Aubrey on the telephone. Tony is with a, uh, a group of motorcyclists uh, who travel all around uh, in, in support of uh, veterans programs and they put on motorcycle rides. They'll be hosted at the Homer City Church of the Nazarene this Saturday and they're inviting you to come out and join them for a ride. So we talk to Tony Aubrey next half hour. It's Indiana in the morning, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. It's 25 minutes after 8 o'clock, and it is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. So Jake in the newsroom, he's on the way right after we do Boomer Sports. It's Indiana in the morning on WCCS.